So that's one of the things about working in the ER is you literally just never know when your next patients are gonna come in or when you're gonna be super busy. These are the things that you should be doing every time you walk in the room. I was able to clinically diagnose that correctly. Good morning. And by morning, I mean four o'clock. <laughs> What is up you guys? I'm Casey and welcome to an ER tech. Um, we're going to do two shifts together, so I guess a couple days in my life. Um, I worked last night till uh, 7 a.m., got home, shower, slept, and then I just now woke up. I woke up at like 3.40, but then I laid in bed for a little bit. It's actually Amazon Prime Day. So I uh, scrolled through there a little bit and there's some really good deals on Apple Watches, but I don't need one. So I'm like, don't buy anything. Um, I have stuff to do before my shift. I have to be at work at 6.45. So we'll see how much we get done. Right now I'm hungry. Typically when I first wake up is when I like to eat breakfast. So I'll just go ahead and make some instant oatmeal. So this vlog, I want to focus on giving you guys the tips that I wish I would have known before I started working in the ER. So the first thing I want to talk about is what you should be doing when you walk into a patient's room. And I know this kind of sounds silly, but this is the stuff that nobody really tells you. So let's say you have to walk into a patient's room to do just about anything. The first thing you should do when you walk into the patient's room is you should be forming a general impression. When you walk into the patient's room, what do they look like? Um, so what does that mean? What is their skin color? Um, is it normal for their ethnicity? Um, are they in any obvious pain? Um, is the patient well kept? And we're not doing this to judge the patient in any sort of way, but this helps us treat you medically, you know? Are you dressed appropriately for the, the weather? You know, grooming, all that stuff. That is your general impression of the patient. And it's super important that you make this general impression because this is kind of your decision making of how does this patient present clinically, you know? Um, so if I walk into a room and I see someone who, you know, is super pale for their ethnicity, their skin is cool, clammy, I'm like, ooh, we're not doing too hot. Versus if I walk in the room and I see someone, you know, that I walk in the room and they smile back at me and say, hi, medically, I'm thinking, okay, cool, clammy person needs my attention a lot more than the person smiling back at me saying hi. You know, this is us using our medical assessment and basically you should be thinking, how sick is this person? That is your general impression of them. Then after you've made your quick general impression, and you know, this general impression is just sort of a size up and it should just, the first thing when you walk in the room, boom. And that's what you wanna practice. Um, and then what I like to do is I like to just quickly glance at the vitals. And what I'm looking, are the vitals compatible with life? And I know that sounds silly, but I have had a patient, you know, they're chilling, scrolling through Instagram and their blood pressure is like 60 over 40. And I'm like, whoa that's a little low, let's hit the recycle button. And sure enough, then it's normal. Or do you walk in the room and your patient, you know, they're pale, they look like crap for better words, and their heart rate's in the 20s? Well, you know, they don't look good and their vitals are also telling you they're not good. So these are the things that you should be doing every time you walk in the room. And this can be done literally as you're entering the room. You knock on the door, you slide the curtain or the door back, boom, you make your general impression, and then you look at the vitals. And this is something that literally no one has ever told me to do. It's just something that I've learned to do because you don't wanna be in that room. And you know, let's say some of the most common things I'm doing, I'm doing an EKG or I'm answering a call light. And you don't wanna walk in the room 
and like I said, their vitals are off or something about them is off and you missed it because you were too focused on the task at hand. Even though you're going in the room to do something else, this is something you should be doing each time because most of us as techs are gonna go on to do something else. Most of you guys aren't gonna stay a tech and you are one day gonna be the nurse, you are one day gonna be the paramedic, the physician's assistant, the doctor, and these are things that the best providers and the best nurses, the best paramedics, these are the things that they do automatically. It's just never been told to do. So, insider tip, and hopefully I explained the general impression well enough to you guys. But. Right now I'm gonna eat my oatmeal and I have to go get some groceries for the day. I am sitting in my car right now. Hopefully you guys can still hear me with the air conditioner. Sorry, I gotta keep it running. It is literally 93 degrees out. Um, but I just wanted to go over another thing that is super, super important for techs to know. You need to know your vital signs. And not only that, you need to know your vital signs for every single age group. I'll put a chart up on the screen of all the vital signs you should know, but you need to know vital signs for newborns, you need to know vital signs for infants, you need to know vital signs for like toddlers, um, school age kids, preschool, because um, it's super important when you are taking someone's vitals, you have to know are these normal, are these not normal. So very, very important, know your vital signs. But I am now waiting for my Target pickup order and this is a great hack for just anyone who works these 12 hour shifts, whether it be night shift, day shift, you don't have a lot of time. And uh, this Target pickup is amazing because I already picked everything out and they are now gonna bring it out to my car. I literally just sit here and I had a little downtime at work and I was actually able to do my whole shopping list, which was great. So we are just gonna wait for them to bring the stuff out for, to my car. shower of the day because it is so damn hot um so I've got my scrubs on right now honestly the camera is not focusing hi I'm right here please focus on me we're gonna try this again all right I'm running late my camera's messing with me um did all the groceries. Luckily, my lunch is still, I have leftovers from last night, so I still have some of that packed. I need to be at work in 45 minutes. Oh yeah, I know what I was saying. My scrub top is actually not a scrub top. It's a shirt from Lululemon. And my pants are from Tara Scrubs. Love these pants. I actually have a full review video about them. You guys should go check that out. But another tip is you need to pack a lot more food than you would think. There's something about night shift that you're just hungry and snacks are your best friend. You don't always have time to sit down and have like a full meal. So the more snacks you can bring and just munch on throughout the night, it is super, super helpful because there's nothing worse than being like almost halfway, two thirds of the way through your shift and you've eaten nothing. That is the worst feeling ever. So I've got my snacks packed. And then someone last night brought pizza, which normally I don't eat it but it was actually good pizza, so I was like, you know what? I'll eat the good pizza. So my entree, if you will, that I packed last night, I didn't eat. Here's my entree, I'm sounding so fancy. Um, and then got fruit, got vegetables. You also can never have enough caffeine. We're gonna grab energy drinks. Never enough. And then I'll bring some 
crackers and this should be good. packing my lunch and it's I don't think I'll have time to come over there I, I just got done packing my lunch I don't think I'm gonna have time to come over there because by the time I come drive over out I'll have to leave okay, let me save you some food. yeah if you could bring me some leftovers and tell your mom I'm sorry I couldn't make it it was just too hectic with the groceries can I bring it? Uh, can I, uh, you don't have to bring it, Torin. Just leave it in the fridge for me and I'll bring it to work tomorrow. Bring it to the fridge. Yeah, put it put it in our fridge. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Okay. Oh I I won't get to see you before I leave for work. That's alright. Mm, I love you. Bye. This is how you know you packed a good lunch. I can barely get it to close. I honestly probably need a new lunch box. All right, let's let's reorganize this. All right. There we go. Look at, oh, this bad boy is heavy. Jesus. I like to eat. It's 6.20 right now, and I was hoping I would maybe have time to like film a TikTok or something for my, uh, or a TikTok, a reel for my Instagram, but I have to leave in five minutes. And I have some Amazon packages, so I figured we can open those together. Okay, so this is something, oh dear. This is something that TikTok made me buy. Urgh. They are um, organizers for the fridge. So maybe we'll do this together when I get home. So they stack on top of each other. Ooh, oh, I'm gonna be that girl and have the really cute fridge. Oh my gosh, super excited for these. Oh, yay. And then, this is, I ordered new uh, pre-workout. I use Bucked Up pre-workout. This is one of my favorite flavors. It's the Blue Raz, amazing. And then I got um, two new shaker bottles just because their shaker bottles are great because they actually lock close, which it's crazy to me how many shaker bottles still don't lock close, so. We've got our organizers, which we'll do in the morning, and then the shaker bones. So, I'm probably gonna head off to work. I'll show you guys a close up of the work fit. Like I said, that Lululemon shirt, love these, because right now it is over 90 degrees in Missouri. It is ridiculously hot, and they actually have like ventilation holes, which is super, super nice. These Tara scrub pants and my Tara compression socks. Guys, wear your compression socks. We're on our feet for 12 hours. Wear your compression socks. But yeah, these pants are really great. They uh, fit my butt, which is really hard to find with scrubs. If you're a girl, you know scrub pants are really hard. But yeah, I actually have a discount code for these. I'll um, put them up on the screen. And then I've got on my headband, little jewelry, and of course I wear a watch. All right, guys, shift two of three. I'm not even caffeinated yet. Let's get it. Good morning, you guys. And by morning, of course, I mean afternoon because I work night shift. So I woke up at like 3.45 today and it's about 4.30. I'm just having a bit of breakfast. Um, I didn't vlog this morning when I got off work just because I was so tired, I just wanted to shower and go right to bed. So last night, after 11 o'clock, so after 2300, it was only me and another tech, and the other tech was out in triage, so I was basically the only tech on the floor, and 
it was hectic like there is just so much to do when you're the only tech and so that is my other tip to you guys is the ER can be a very fast place a very fast pace placed so you know it kind of ebbs and flows so like we were really busy from um, 1900 to I would say like 0100 we were super super busy but then we kind of died down and it started to um, become less chaotic but then there have been nights where you know after a certain time it's chill and then boom boom all of a sudden there's an accident or something or someone really sick comes in and it's just unpredictable so that's one of the things about working in the ER is you literally just never know when your next patients are gonna come in or when you're gonna be super busy which I kind of like because you never know what you're gonna get if you're up on the floor you kind of know you're gonna be assigned a certain amount of patients and whatnot um, so I kind of like the inevitability of the ER but it's just something to note that it's inevitable it can be fast-paced it can be slow-paced you might have a night where you see no critical patients you might have a night where you only see critical patients so that's just something that you have to be willing to work with going on into the ER I now have real people clothes on and I'm mixing up some pre-workout and I'm gonna head to the gym I don't always work out before my night shifts it just depends on how I feel. Um, I mean, preferably I, look, I would like to work out before them because it makes me feel good. I'm working a stretch of three shifts right now, and this is my third one. So I worked out the first shift, skipped the second shift, and now I'm working out the third one. I probably should be making this like its own video, but whatever. I splurged on myself and I bought the Sony WH um, XM4 headphones. Um, it was Amazon Prime Day a couple days ago and these bad boys were on mega sale. So I, I've been wanting over the ear headphones for a while and I was like, you know what? It's time. Oh. So it slides open like this. Ooh. comes in a super nice case. I wanna take these to the gym. Hopefully they have a little bit of a charge. Wow, it the case it comes in is like super luxe. Oh baby. All right, I'm gonna try these out at the gym. Torn just got home. You wanna say hi to the vlog? This is a new vlog. I've been vlogging a couple days in a row. And so like today's vlog is a different vlog. You wanna say hi? Hello. Any, any comments to the vlog? Uh, no. Okay. You're out of focus, oh dear. Just finished my workout at the gym. I'm gonna head home. I have like 40, basically I have like 30 minutes to shower, pack my lunch and get changed. My first impression of the headphones, I really, really liked them. Like I did not hear another person in my gym and I went at like prime time at my gym. I went from like five o'clock when my gym is really busy and I did not hear a single person, which was great. I'm going through this light. Oh fuck, that was red, that was very red. Oops, oh dear. Uh, um, and I really liked them. The only issue is that because they're over the ear headphones, like my whole entire ear is enclosed in the headphones. So it was, I don't know where to put you guys where you can see me. So it was basically like wearing earmuffs in the gym like I got so hot and my heart rate was so high like my heart rate was above 150 my entire workout and I was not doing cardio so I don't know if I'm gonna wear them to the gym just because I felt like legit was wearing ear earmuffs and it added just like a whole nother element to my workout but I overall really liked the headphones I think I'm just gonna more use them for like editing and 
stuff like that I don't think they're good for working out unfortunately which sucks because the noise canceling was amazing on them we're running late as always um, packed my lunch super super quick and I'm wearing these bright ass scrubs let me show you guys These are figs. I'm trying them out. I'm gonna review them for you guys. My initial impression is they fit my thighs very well, but they do not fit my waist, which seems to be a recurring issue for me. Oh. Throw the hair up in a ponytail. Torn, what do you think of my uh, my work, my scrubs right now? Like if I walked into your room and I was like, hi, I'm gonna be taking care of you today. What would your uh, first impressions be? Um, I would think you were a highlighter. A, like a cute a walking, highlighter? A walking highlighter. A walking highlighter. Okay, I'll take it. Rah! See, look how big it, these are in the waist. Like, God damn. Oh dear. This is why, this is why I can't vlog, guys. Look at this, Torn. I look like I was just on Weight Watchers. shift best shift oh my gosh tonight was like probably one of the worst shifts of my life oh oh let my neck crack oh I'm literally sitting on the floor because <laughs> I'm so dirty and disgusting that I don't even want to sit on the couch oh my god so the night I knew that we were short staffed tonight, but man, it was, it was brutal. Ugh. And you know that, like I was saying, that's the ER, man. You just never know. Like we had so many patients come in tonight. Like, whew, our census was so high, I'm sure. Ugh. But basically, um, I was the only tech after uh, 4 a.m. But the other tech that was there helping me, they sat like almost the whole night because they, you know, we had sitting needs. So I was just running around like a chicken with my head cut off, just trying to help the nurses task as much as I could, as well as staying on top of cleaning rooms and stocking and, oh. I will say, so like I just, I literally did so many things tonight that it is not in my brain. Like my brain right now is just a fog. Um, but something I was super, super proud of is I caught an N, an N STEMI. And for those of you guys who don't know what that is, that means a non STEMI. It's like textbook chest pain. They came in like gripping their chest and they're like, I'm having the worst chest pain of my life radiates down my arm, radiates to my jaw, which immediately you're thinking, okay, well, you're having a, um, an M, like an MI. And so, uh, we do an EKG and the EKG is completely normal. There's no STEMI on the EKG. So we're, I'm like, that's just super weird. Um, and like my spidey senses are tingling. So I print off an old EKG and um, I bring it back to the ER attending for him to look at. 
and I told him, and I'm glad it was like an attending I was comfortable with, um, and I was like, he's giving me non-STEMI vibes, and the attending kind of chuckled. They're just breathing like 40 times a minute, and they're at, like their oxygen's perfect, the EKG's perfect, but I was like, he's just giving me like, if someone wants to have a non-STEMI, it's this guy. So uh, the attending was like, yeah, let's just bring him right back. And so we brought him back. We do a troponin. The first troponin is slightly elevated, like nothing crazy. Um, then we repeat the troponin. It's through the roof. We're having a non-STEMI. And like, obviously I'm not happy that the patient is having something medically wrong with them, but I am happy that I was able to clinically diagnose that correctly. So that felt super, super good. Giving myself a little pat on the back for that. Cause you know, that's just something that, and that's one of the reasons why I like triage. Um, is that you do have to catch stuff like that. Like you have to be thinking, okay, this patient's EKG is normal, but they're clearly, like they're clinically presenting not normal. And so you have to know those things. And I just felt so good. Cause like there was a point in my teching career where I would have been like, oh, EKG is normal. Vitals are good, they're fine. But it's like you have to be thinking about all these other angles and all these other things that might be going wrong with them. So I was super, super happy that I was able to figure that out. All right, guys, drop a comment down below. What do you want to know about the ER? And I am going to go take a shower. And we will chat a bit more about the ER. Ooh.